Hey, my name is Steaks, and welcome back to another episode of Player Pants, a video series where I play brand new gacha games so you don't have to. Today, we're taking a look at Light of the Stars, a brand new semi idle tactical RPG. This is a brand new gacha game that just launched today. The art is actually launching today. I got early access to the game so I could bring it. To your guys' attention, let you know my brutal honest thoughts on whether it's something you should actually invest time into playing or skip altogether. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that little bell notification, that way you're made up to date with every single thing that I post. Other than that, let's just go ahead and jump right in, beginning first and foremost with the characters. I did a dedicated video on all of the characters I uploaded just last night if you want to go ahead and look at all of them. The character artwork in this game is absolutely incredible as you can tell just by looking at them. Now the in-game models on the other hand are not narrowly as detailed, not narrowly as good. But at the same time, you kind of look at these characters from a top-down isometric perspective so you don't necessarily see them. You kind of see them from quite a distance where the quality of the character models aren't really a factor. Light of the Stars is a chapter mission-based game. Currently, there are 19 chapters available. I've cleared all the way through chapter 8 over the course of the last, like, 48 hours. Every chapter has, give or take, like, 5 to 10 different missions. There are varying difficulties. I've cleared up through chapter 8 on normal. There are difficult difficulties that give you the 4-star bonus which all contribute towards the rewards you receive down the bottom left of the screen. This game is incredibly difficult. I will say that <laughs> immediately. And by difficult, I don't necessarily mean that the encounters are challenging or require a lot of tactical knowledge or effort. What I mean by difficult is that the game is severely gated behind power and you earn very little in terms of premium currency in-game, very little in terms of stamina restoration in-game. Which means that if you want to play this for 3, 5, 10 hours day one, you're going to hit a wall. You can't just play this mindlessly. You can't play this for as long as you want to. You're going to hit a point where you need to stop for an extended period of time. Wait for all your stamina to recover and then continue. Unfortunately, I I think I leveled like 15, 20 levels in the rate of stamina restoration was abysmal. Every single mission takes 10 stamina. At almost level 20, I think I'm at, I literally have 105 stamina, which means I could do approximately 10 fights. Now, this doesn't factor in the resource grind that you're required to participate in to upgrade your characters. You can level up your characters, you promote your characters to break through their level cap. They require certain resources that you either need to sweep levels for or use items for. The items are very limited, which means you need to constantly sweep. Sweeping costs, of course, 10 stamina so you can Realistically, you have two options here. You can continue trying to pursue the story, or you can attempt to sweep and grind the resources required to promote them and continue to level your characters. If you don't promote your characters, you cannot continue with the story because it is too difficult unless you're <laughs> like a dozen or so levels above the current levels of the enemy, the current combat requirement, combat power requirement rather, it is very difficult. This is not a game you want to pursue <laughs> as a main game where you want to invest numerous hours per day into it. Your characters also have basic skills, ultimate skills, talents. They interestingly enough have links. Now these links actually provide beneficial boosts to your characters. They go into effect when you deploy a character that has a link with another character. So as an example, Sophia has a link with Vix. Sophia has a link with Sakabia. I don't use either of them in combat, but going to, as an example, Nolan here, he has a link with Cash that raises Nolan's HP by 2000 just for being in the same party. Finch. Hanas or Haynes, I don't know how you pronounce that dude's name. So matching up your 
your team composition requires a little bit of forethought and luck because at the same time you have to actually make sure you obtain the characters that can link together and synergize well with one another. Now, before we talk any more about the game, let me take a moment to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon and allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are incredible and I cannot thank you all enough for the support. There is the record system, which allows for you to look into the hero info, the background info, hear the voice acting, that then once unlocked allows for you to give your character's presence, which if I recall, actually unlocked the outfit for one of my characters. Let's we'll see if I can find them. Now, I, I, I haven't been able to do this for any other character, but it changed her from this basic outfit into this outfit. But this is just an illustration. This wasn't like her in-game, in, in battle outfit. So it's all very, very confusing to me. Now, I'm not sure if only characters that have this icon at the top of the screen, the Vow of the Stars, are the characters that obtain alternate outfits. I'm gonna go ahead here and see if I can quickly boost her to affinity level three. As you can tell, boosting the affinity with each respective character actually boosts their stats, which makes them more powerful. Unfortunately, I do not have enough to unlock or boost her to level three, but it does look like I get something important over there. Some kind of outfit. You can awaken your character, which essentially is what you utilize your dupes for. The dupes, of course, are the shard pieces. Awakening them naturally boosts their power. And then there are tarot cards, which are essentially gear. They're essentially the artifacts that you'd encounter in Genshin Impact. They provide you base statistical boosts. They have set effects. They're essentially the thing you grind for that you're going to hate. <laughs> when playing through the game, you can actually trial all of the SSR heroes, which is pretty cool, but you do have a limited number of uses per character. There's a seven day login reward, which actually gifts you Aurora on the seventh day. There is a cash shop. This isn't something I've really looked into because I mean, other than VIP memberships, I don't really care about cash shops. The, like looking in, looking at it right now, it, it's about what you'd expect. SR Hero Shard Box, SSR Hero Shard Box, these are randoms. So here you have an SSR Hero Shard Selection Box, which allows for you to select any hero you want of the SSR rarity for 6,000 shards. These shards are obtained through disassembling current heroes or through just summoning. It's honestly not bad. Here you have random SSR Hero Shard Box. So honestly, this, this is actually something to work towards you're rewarded for playing the game longer. It'll just take forever to achieve. Talking about summoning, after a certain point through the game, you unlock the ability to infinitely re-roll. They give you the option of continuing to resummon indefinitely until you get the character or characters that you want. I did, I think, almost 30 pulls the other uh, yesterday until I obtained the... Man, I don't even remember who I got. I think it was the tank character. Other than that, I believe Pity is at 70, which means an SSR hero is guaranteed after 70 pulls. That's honestly not bad. As an additive to gear, there are glitters. These are things that you equip before going into battle. There is a guild feature, but since I'm playing it, a version of the game that isn't currently public. This isn't something that I can really participate in. You can upgrade the ship that you're flying on. You can dispatch units for resources. You can upgrade your ship's offensive and defensive capabilities. There's more to the game than just a story though, than just the main chapters and missions. There's the arena where you can fight other players or where, not necessarily other players, but where you can fight the AI of other players. I hate PVP and gotcha games. There is the Lightless Land. This is kind of like a tower defense mode. Essentially what happens is there are waves of enemies and you place down a unit. Now your unit can't actually move after being placed down. Whereas in the main story, they do. They, they freely roam around the entire map, but once placed down here, they don't really possess the ability to, to freely navigate their little area. So you kind of have to be careful where you place them down, or at least that's the description I was given. It does seem like they're running at the target, so 
maybe it doesn't know what it's talking about. But the goal of this is to not let the enemies ravage your commander or your, your, you, essentially, who's the floating chick over on the left. As you can tell, that's going to get progressively more difficult. There is the Radicio. This is a game mode where you go up against really large, powerful monsters, boss monsters, behemoths. You have three different lanes. You need to decide where you want to deploy them because each lane is going to have their own respective enemies that rush you. And then there's the main lane. So you, you got to decide which units you want to pursue which route and also decide who you want in the main lane. And, and, and like the, the ultimate goal here is to just eliminate everything, which honestly isn't really that difficult if you have powerful units like I have. Now, as you can tell, the, the entire game is auto battle. And by that, you place down your units and then they automatically run around. You can use their abilities. You decide who goes where. You decide who uses what. It does require a semblance of strategy because you can actually pull your units back, which restores some of the cost of deploying them. There is the infinite tower, like every single gacha game has, where you deploy units into a small field, you attempt to rush the little enemy crystal while not allowing your crystal to be destroyed or your commander to die. The Every single level gets progressively more difficult. If you've done any infinite tower game mode in any gacha game ever this is the exact same thing now, as you can tell the units are moving on their own you do possess special abilities that are completely separate from your units that you can use if you want to like this one where i can target a single unit and deal mass damage to them that just one shot that unit and that is pretty much the game honestly for what it is it's is not bad there are semi-live 2d models there is a, a bit of voice acting for the characters not as part of the story the the story all of the the text is completely unvoice acted the characters look pretty good i was actually kind of surprised when i saw them there are a lot of husbandos in the game that all look pretty damn good the waifus look fantastic the combat isn't bad the chapter mission based system is pretty standard the stamina system the rate of stamina acquisition is horrible you are severely time gated unless you spend money and i don't think that's that's very free to play friendly i think that's friendly for players that only play for 10 minutes a day otherwise i think it's going to force you to either spend money or to just drop the game i feel like for most players this isn't necessarily going to be something that they can enjoy long term or enjoy in longer play sessions i think the pity is actually pretty decent at 70. there are a lot of game modes which means that you'll have plenty to do unfortunately multiple of the game modes take up your stamina and as we noted your stamina <laughs> rate of acquisition is absolutely horrible there are other mini games that are separate from the combat altogether that are actually kind of fun to play ultimately though i feel as though this is a game that you can definitely play you can definitely have fun in but at the same time is not going to be a game that you can play a lot of now you might be able to if you play 10 minutes a day and instead of progressing with the story progressing with the chapters you just farm the materials you need log in once every six hours farm a few of the materials upgrade one of your characters every couple days and after a week or two sure go ahead and continue as far as you possibly can until you hit this roadblock again. That That is perfectly fine for some people. Like me, I don't have a lot of time to play a lot of gacha games, so I can play games for 10, 15 minutes a day, move on to the next one. But not everyone's like that. Some people like playing for hours at a time, and if you do, that's not this game. Now, that is everything to know about Light of the Stars. The game launches, as I said, today. If you're interested in playing it, go right ahead. Try the game out. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself, because at the end of the day, you or your opinion might align with mine, or it might be completely different. Either way, if this is not a game you're all interested in, absolutely no problem. I got you covered for two different videos on screen right now. There might be more up your alley.